Today, I want to go back to The Strain. It's one of my favourite vampiric franchises of all time. I think it's really underrated and deserves far more recognition for an overall great story arc. So I want to do a video on The Worm. I love how it's not just an instant transition into a vampire. It happens over time, like a proper shedding of everything the human body is and it just becomes a mere vessel for the host. Now I have to admit that this is the part that hooked me. It's different and it works. So let's take a look at the worm, its origins, how it works, how it affects the body. This is going to be a detailed and what I hope to be an interesting video for you all today. I know the strain is over, the books are over, but I love this whole franchise and I'm going to make as many videos as possible on this topic. So let's start with the Strain Universe's take on vampirism. So all vampires that exist on the planet stem from seven individuals known as the Ancients. These are the first Strigoi to exist and are believed to be the limbs from the fallen Archangel Osriel. Three of the Ancients were based in the Old World and four based in the New. I'll make a detailed video about the Ancients if you guys want, so let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, so vampirism acts as a virus. Well, basically it is a virus, but is genuinely considered a gift that should be earned and bestowed upon the worthy by six of the seven ancients. The master being the one to differentiate with this open view to infecting as many people as possible in order to create an army. The worm is quite similar to that of a normal parasitic worm that we'd see as it multiplies itself when it enters the host's body. The only difference being that the vampire worm works extremely fast and can multiply to the hundreds within seconds. It is the method of reproduction for the vampires and used only to keep their hidden population under control. When it enters the bloodstream, it carries an incurable and fast acting mutagenic virus that rewrites its host's DNA. To be able to actually do that from a scientific standpoint is completely unheard of and it results in the body just acting as somewhat of a shell, as I mentioned earlier on. As the parasitic worm spreads and multiplies throughout the body, there are many physical and mental changes that occur over the course of the next seven days to a month. The host's hair and all body hair begins to thin and fall out. Why this happens is unclear. I can only assume that this is because the strigoi can regulate their own body temperature at a very high 48.9 degrees Celsius, which means they have no need for additional warmth. The eyes become bloodshot and the pupils permanently enlarge before the eye itself takes a secondary reptilian form of blinking. The person's skin then begins to lose all pigment completely. This happens rather quickly and it makes sense as the white estragoi are so sensitive to sunlight. The teeth of the individual begin to fall out as new sharp fangs grow in place. The nose will also wear away, but this takes time as it's a mixture of cartilage and bone, so it has to basically rot away or disintegrate, so to speak. The ears are also lost, although the vampire's hearing will be unrivaled by any human. This contradicts the show as they grow longer and more pointed. The only reason being was that the show's creators wanted the Strigoi to have more of an unnatural looking appearance. Over time, the middle finger, otherwise known as the long finger, takes after its name and elongates to what seems to be a third longer in length than the rest of its fingers. The male genitalia, differing from the nose as it's just flesh, rots quickly and basically falls off after the last of the human fluids exits its body. The new digestive tract will be for both urine and excrement and now have one exit point instead of two, like a bird does. Inside the body is where the interesting change happens. The organs that are not needed convert into sacs and the stomach expands and tears as it makes its way for the formation of the stinger which happens rather quickly. The long retractable proboscis that hides beneath what was originally the host's tongue capable of extending up to six feet from the mouth. This stinger is both the vampire's feeding and reproductive mechanism shooting forth to latch onto vulnerable human prey at the throat or thigh draining the victim's blood for nutrition and infecting the human with a capillary of worms at the same time, leaving every victim as a newborn, though still outwardly human. The vampire's jaw is set at a lower hinge than a human, 
the mouth gaping like a snape's when the stinger is deployed. As the structure of the stinger is modified tissue from the human lungs and throat, vampires are incapable of physical speech once the stinger has been deployed. It's no secret that a vampire drinks blood. In every franchise, I think that's the main thing they have in common and it doesn't change in the strain either. Nutrition from the blood feeding is transported through this system via a thick, viscous white fluid that forms the vampire equivalent of blood. This white fluid has a very potent healing property if administered orally to humans. However, in doing so, one must be careful as to not ingest the worms or else they run the risk of becoming infected. Many of the physical changes from human to vampire occur gradually following the initial worm infection and are accompanied by great pain. A newly turned human will lie in a state of suspended animation for an entire day, rising the next night as a nascent vampire. The stinger is present for the vampire's first foray to facilitate feeding. The vampire's mental state will also be confused at first and its movements will be clumsy and awkward. As it matures, however, the vampire will become supremely agile, able to leap great distances and climb sheer surfaces with the aid of its talons. Full maturity, physically and mentally, occurs within the first 30 nights. Probably the most notable change after the worm had infected the body is the fact that the host now becomes immortal. Its tissue does not deteriorate or weaken with time, which means the vampire now has an endless lifespan. Although having incredibly sensory assets, the vampire's greatest asset, however, is the hive mind, of which all vampires share with the ancient that their line comes from. Each vampire, through some unidentified telepathic link, is able to send and receive thought and information to and from its ancient relation. In this manner, the ancient vampires direct the actions of their individual spawn through mental communication, regardless of distance. It has been noted that radiation shielding properties of the element lead has the effect of blocking this mental connection. So there you have it everyone, that is my take on how the worm affects and transforms the human body. If you want to see more videos on the Strain franchise, then please let me know as I'd be super happy to make them for you. Just let me know what topic from the franchise you want to see and I'll put it in the list of videos that I plan to make. Thanks again, see you all very soon.